involvement, you know. Yeah, the work that you've been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, actually, um, it's almost like a shift in certain individuals, which goes from um, the the per person giving the session, uh, guiding, fully guiding and seeing everything, to a shift in that they have to do it. It's demanding now. Okay, that's enough now. Now you have to tap into this and I can talk to you directly kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? And then, I don't know, uh, yeah. That's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to have people, like the new therapy is the therapy where uh, people are working on themselves on the spot as it comes up. Yes. A while back, somebody who is a counselor asked me, well, what's my role? You know, if everybody's embodying the new paradigm, then what have I got to do, you know? And I think that us as a generation, or even multiple generationally speaking, the ones that are, we are living here today, mm -hmm. we have a role in um, education, like educating individuals to be that, to be the new paradigm, to really embody and give permission in it because it hasn't been safe up to now. It hasn't been safe to really be yourself. And, um, and a lot of individuals also who come in, I don't know if you have seen this too, but a lot of people who come in from collective awarenesses, collective consciousnesses, and they're not really fully developed as a singular being, as a singular soul. But to be a human, you have to embody and become a singular soul, have had a really tough time forming a functional and able singular expression of themselves. Yeah. I don't know if you saw, I've seen that at all, but that, that's been really kind of right here. That, you know, I've been seeing it a lot. That, that, that kind of doesn't work so well on this plane. No. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, cause, yeah. Cause I, I, what do you see? I, I mean, I see, but I'm seeing a certain aspect of that, that I have, that I have, uh, you know, the people that I have communicated with and it's almost like there is no boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. There is no boundaries. And There's no need for them. Yeah. To a degree. No, no. In their original. Yeah. In their First, original. Like, yeah. <laughs> Here, yes, there are very much needs for boundaries. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, uh, and so yeah, uh, they have a tremendous uh, difficulty learning that. But then once they come into it and they learn that you know I am a separate entity and that and that I have choice, right? Uh, that I have to think these things here on right. this planet. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I think that from the two, I've only seen two of your sessions, the one that you did uh, live online and then the other one with Larry. And it, it felt very much that that is one of the key aspects of somebody who, uh, like yourself, but there's, some, I mean, a lot of our audience are people who give sessions and um, guidance and tools. And... Uh, the role of that is very, very necessary right now because we're bridging from a society that does not support the individual who comes in at a high frequency and not having a very singular identity to be able to form them to become valuable members of society from their uh, strengths and skills, mm -hmm. but tries to fit them into something that is is not their nature even um, yeah. to a society where that will be honored and um, nurtured and help helped in in letting the person um, construct that very functional singular per being right on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> and they came in for a reason. I mean, they chose to come in here. Mm -hmm for this for a reason and m maybe once we're past a certain point uh that'll the, the oneness will kick in uh the the releasing and the oneness will come in at this point still we need to have to have 
boundaries when we're jerking, when we're dealing with the energy that are here. Yeah. Yeah. The bridging, isn't it? Like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's a generational thing. I think all the generations that are here today are getting the bridging. It's like they're getting down to constructing and um, creating the bridge between um, the old and the new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's how it feels. Although at the same time, the, the bridge of choosing is gone. People have already made their choices. And, um, you know, whether to carry on living a, an enslaved, sleepy life uh, experience or for many lifetimes, is again, in the future. And those individuals who want to have a more natural, high-frequency experience at a physical yeah. level, that's, mm-hmm. that bridge is done. <laughs> There's no more. I mean, people have taken their own decisions and where to go. Yeah, and- exactly. And, and they, you know, just want to want to understand themselves more and more and it's you know it, it's nothing really that we teach them anyone it's just what opening up what they already know what they came in here with yeah um and that that was a a severe block in childhood right yes because that's where they that's where they they get it mm-hmm. is first of all I mean, you may have already had abandonment as a child, but then then the second aspect is going to school and being abandoned from the family and all of that to go to this school thing. And here you are in this woggly state of who do you don't know who you are and your identity and everything, and you have to take on this new identity and be yeah. something else. And that's the start of this mask, this societal mask that people put on that really covers up the the god that they are because they came in that way Mm. Uh, they came in knowing full well what they wanted what they wanted to do uh, but that causes a real a real shiv Mm. uh, because now they have this this pain aspect right here before coming in right they came in and they have this and now so whenever they think about doing something to clean to, to come back into their own state, they kind of flick back in their mind and think about this pain and go, no, I don't want to do anything. Because right? <laughs> yeah. that was painful. Yeah. That's yeah. so true. Yeah. I was talking to Larry the other day uh, about my own experience because um, when I was 18, I had a, a motorbike accident um, and I lost functions, um, music and maths and n- names. I lost them from my brain. And I, I've always said, you know, that's a tool, um, you choose this. But I also remember when I was 14, I chose to forget a lot of stuff. And before then, um, the, the reason we, ha- we were having this conversation was because he was, um, we, we were calculating the price of something, some gear for his, um, he's a fisherman, a commercial fisherman. So some of the gear that would be, uh, we would need in order for him to go uh, fishing for crabs and Mm -hmm. um and then he said okay so i need blah so many and they cost blah how much is that going to be and i just told him how much it was going to be right just off the top of my head and he's looking at me going whoa so he did the calculator and it was exact you know that was the amount and i said yeah that was like super easy and then i remembered that before that accident but in particular before i was 14 I had that um, skill. I mean, it's like I was two or three and I could count in any base that you could imagine. Uh, my dad would play one or two notes on the piano and I would tell him what concert from whatever, you know, yeah. classical music that was. And full recall, I would read a book that I had read years earlier. Somebody would randomly open a page and I would just verbatim tell them what the page said so all these skills you know mm-hmm. and um many many more also it's like insane <laughs> the, the yeah. capacity and the abilities that i had coming in and then yeah. slowly and i remember the moments some of them not all but some of the moments when those those started going away and what fascinated me about the other day and the stories right like oh yeah i had a car crash and it got brain damage blah blah you know all these stories and um and then the other day when it just 
happened just like that. And I was like, huh, I remember how that felt. I remember that. And it was like, it was easy. And I remember how it felt to hear everybody's thoughts around me and not get overwhelmed. I could remember, you know, and I was like, I remember that. How come I'm remembering now? And it's almost like I could just reach a little bit and I will have it all back. Right. Yes. The abilities, all those abilities. I don't know how many abilities you blocked in yourself, but for example, I could see entities and dead people like you and me. It's like the, I could even touch them. Like they felt solid to me, right, mm-hmm. around me. And, and then that went away at some point as well. So it was like, what fascinates me most is not, oh my gosh, all these abilities and Ellie has there. You know, everybody, every kid I've ever seen yeah, and seen, yes exactly has those things to different degrees and depending on their interests that they came in with right yes extremely aware um but from my perspective what fascinates me is how come from now at this point in time in our paradigm i can perceive those again i don't have the skills back I, i i would like to have them back but it's almost like all i have to do is just reach a tiny little bit and I'll have them you know it's almost like that and it's, it feels to me that that's not just me but it's something that is vibrating throughout the planet I know that individuals are tired and I know that individuals think that terrible things are happening on the planet all the time and it's very dark but that's a lie because if you scan the planet at the moment it's really high frequency it's the highest it's ever been and it's increasing like doubles yes. every day kind of thing and it feels almost like that's not just me that can just reach and pull that back but it's almost feel that everybody who's chosen to embody the new paradigm can do that now seeing as you are expert in doing these things what would you suggest then for us to do in order to mm-hmm fully come back, bring those back. Feeling. You see, um, what's happened is um, they, there was this uh, whole thing about going into uh, thinking about things rather than doing things. When you were a child, you just felt it and did it. Felt it is the key. You felt it. You, when you feel, when you start with feeling and you feel it, you step back into what it's like to have those abilities, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a feeling inside of you. And knowing where that feeling is in your body, there's a bit of an excitement. There's a bit of a, a tickle, a joy with it. Now, you have full uh, uh, permission from yourself and your your goddess within everything to just focus on that feeling and start to breathe in and expand it. And the bigger that you make it, the more literally uh, metaphorically it becomes your reality Mm. because it's all stored in feelings. And you kept saying it throughout the question you were asking me. So when you go back and look at this, you're going to see it that the greater part of you was saying feeling, feeling, feeling. That's how you get back. Mm. Anyway. And yeah. I'm just picking up on it and just going, feeling. <laughs> um, yeah. b- because the greater part of you is speaking through you, right? Those, all of those capacities ended with the feeling of fear. Mm-hmm. So fear was injected into them and that blocked them in different stages of yeah. life. Yes. Yeah, so that's and a really low frequency if, feeling. Yeah, if 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 fear hadn't been injected, would you still be doing it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, is it just one fear that just pokes its head out at everything? I don't think so. I think they're kind of um, you know. I think they're custom made for each activity. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. And what would it feel like if fear was to just go and just, just drop? Dissolve. Yeah. 
and then love come in right. and that excitement and that see i know that you know perfectly well how to work on yourself and i don't need to do that <laughs> it is wrapping our head around the and conceiving it mm -hmm. so when fear floods in it's just boom 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 and the next thing you know like i say to people the brain runs perfectly your system runs perfectly but if you just add fear everything runs in reverse all of a sudden we're manifesting everything we don't want we're all that yes so absolutely yeah fear throws the whole thing in reverse it does yeah it's, it's like it's almost like the tipsy turpy reality that that's why this paradigm is ruled with fear because that's the only way to okay. keep it upside down right okay. Yeah. And so I, I'm going to just play here a little bit if you want. Do you want to? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Show me that again. Show me how, show me with your hands and I'm going to show, show you how to work with metaphors, okay. which you probably already know, but we'll show the rest of them. So you showed me topsy turvy. Mm -hmm. right with your hands. Show me. Topsy turvy. Okay. Now stop. Okay. Do you give the goddess within you permission to turn it right side up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, turn your hands the other way now. Oh, God, there we go. <laughs> How does that feel? Yeah, that does feel really good. <laughs> so a lot of people don't, they look at something like that and they go, what? Yeah, uh, yeah. But until you feel it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you just turned it back right side up. Now, I want you to think about one of the abilities that was injected with fear. Mm, okay, let me scan. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Let's see. <laughs> I have to choose now. Um, okay, uh, full recall. Okay, full yes. recall. Yes. Now, think about the fear. Mm -hmm. Put your hands that way. The way it's topsy-turvy. What is it? Uh, now I can't even do the tipsy turvy. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. Now, do you want to flip it? Sure. Okay, okay, go ahead. Flip it over. Okay, I have it now. <laughs> See that? Now, how do you feel about recall? Exciting. It feels exciting now. There's an element that we need to do that's physical, so we show this greater part of our mind that we can, we, this is what I want you to do. We work with metaphor, which mm -hmm. is the topsy turvy. This right. is your hand position was your metaphor. And by flipping it over, you're taking control. Mm, that is beautiful. I love it. That's an amazing tool. That's really, yeah. really and, cool. And tools can be developed in a, in a moment with a person just watching yeah. their metaphors yeah. and how they describe it to you. Yeah, that's fascinating. <laughs> that's really cool. cool. You're so talented. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm just me. I don't know. I'm just uh, someone who can. S I came in and I could see, I could see gods and goddesses being uh, suppressed mm. as a boy. I could see. When I look at people, I see them already as a god or goddess, right? And and suppressed. And, and it became my mission in life to figure out how they were suppressing people and to undo that, right? Oh, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. I started out as a hypnotherapist, but then lot later on, I discovered I was more of a dehypnotist than I was a hypnotist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is so funny that you should say that. Because when I was looking, I was looking at not so much as individuals, but I was looking at society, right? Yes. Um, my lineage includes a, my father's family are social engineers um, for, the, for the dark side. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, generationally, uh, he tried very, his very best to turn it around. And... So I was socially fascinated by that, the, hip, the hypnosis that people were under at a social, global level, society level. So I started investigating that aspect of it, not so much individuals, but more to do with um, 
society. It's like, I look around thinking, how do they convince everybody to go nine to five work that they hate? And this is billions of people around the world. It doesn't make any logical sense. And then I started looking into that and I, I, you know, I think I was, I can't remember, 2002, I think it was. Um, I finally figured out, I, I was like, I was trying to figure it out. I couldn't figure it out. So I was guided to join a cult. <laughs> and then I didn't know this was cult, right? It was just, this will give you the answer. Because if I'd been told mm -hmm. this is a cult, I'd be like, what am I going to join that? Mm -hmm. um, and I joined it for about, I don't know, I think it was a year. And at first it was all nice and fluffy and butterflies. And then I started seeing things that were really insidious. And then it became extremely clear that they ruled by fear. Mm -hmm. It was all fear-based. Everything was fear-based. And they, they had absolute control of these people. Yes. I was like, wow. And then as I had come in to try and figure out the global thing, I saw that model. And then I looked and I just looked at how the world was being run with the media and everything else. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's how they do it. And it is, it's like a trance. It's almost like it a, a frequency kind of loop trans thing you know at a at a, a collective level it's like you know it's like really weird bizarre how, how do you control a human race well just like you're talking about you simply start it off in television or in media and you get them afraid of something i don't know if you're if you're at the age that you remember a cartoon called Henny Penny, the sky's mm -hmm. falling. It was this chicken who. I had the little book. Uh huh. Yeah, the chicken licking, it's called in England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken licking, yeah. Henny Penny was afraid the sky was, was falling. falling down. <laughs> yeah. Someone gave her a sky hook to keep it up. Yeah. There was that, that had very uh, profound meaning to it. Yes. If you take a look at society today, because they're all afraid the sky's falling. Yes. They're all afraid this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Yeah. And really all they need is a sky hook so that they feel stable in themselves. The sky hook didn't do anything. No, it didn't. In the cartoon. Yeah. It really didn't. But it was the feeling of security inside. Mm -hmm. That's what they took away. Yeah. They made everybody jangled, like they're jangling. Yeah. Yeah, you, it's like what you, yeah, it's that actually vibration. It's almost like you look into society. If you're, if, it's easier if like, if you're in a city, for example, and you step outside and you see the people, like, and it's like they kind of, you know? Yeah. And you see some of those, uh, you see some of those uh, videos where they do, you know, fast video and you're watching. Oh, yeah feet almost just like to the lights right yeah. and people walking across the street to stop it. you know it's almost like a heartbeat yeah it's, like a, it, it's this energy that's happening in the city was hurry, mm. hurry up you know hurry up that's that's an aspect of it but the influence that i'd like to talk about because what you've seen because what you've seen was was how they were influencing people on the on the grand scale Mm -hmm. how they were influencing people with fear. I remember a, a, a video that they keep taking down this video series and it's called uh, the century of the self. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No, I haven't seen it yet. How they did that and how, especially in, in America, how they did that and how they, how they moved into that controlling the masses. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's, I mean, hats off. Uh, oh, that's all I can say at a mystical level. That is incredible. So effective. They're so, so efficient at it. You know? Now, my question would be, and if you have any insights as every person who's watching this, what can they do? And I know it doesn't have to be like break up placards or get angry or 
I mean, they can do that, <laughs> but it's like, what can they do to support the human collective choice of stepping out of that fear paradigm? Do you know the most powerful thing that I've seen for people to do is to step into it themselves and then tell somebody else mm. and yeah. have them step into it. That seems to grow very, very, I, their yeah. experience of stepping into, into that. What is it that they're, that they're like, I, I share a lot of times in my work. They take, they've taken two carrots out of you basically and held it out in front of you and made you do all kinds of things for those two carrots. And that's acceptance and unconditional love. Mm. And so in order to get that, you see, in order to make the machine work, in order to get that unconditional acceptance, unconditional love is sold to you by, if you buy this or do this, or you do that, everything is outside of you. Mm -hmm. Right. Then, then you will eventually get to this great crescendo of unconditional love and acceptance, but you never get there. Right. That's how <laughs> and so instead they give you fear of not being accepted. Right. Right. So what people need to do individually is to take those carrots back and say, Chuck, you Farley, I'm putting <laughs> carrots inside me. I unconditionally love me and I unconditionally accept myself and you just turn the key off to the machine yeah it doesn't function if you're not afraid right like we were talking mm -hmm. about you put those carrots back in you 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 know or otherwise you're continuously chasing those carrots mm -hmm. i have to get the house that is socially acceptable you know what i mean i have to have the job i have to have this or society isn't going to accept me just do this to society and take your your power back mm -hmm. Which unconditionally loving and accepting yourself when that happens poof they can't control know that 90 percent of what they're talking about out there as far as this and that and other is not an, a, re, a truth the real reality is right about you right yeah. around it's your game your rules <laughs> yeah that is a really good point too because when i heard uh, some years ago, there was this lady and she was stuck in her room watching television and she was terrified of, I can't remember the disease of flavor at the time, I think. What was it? Uh, I don't remember if it was avian flu or Ebola. I can't remember what it was two years ago. And she was like terrified and she didn't want to get out of her house or do anything in case, in case she got it, right? And I said, okay, so that's what's being projected. So. But if you open your eyes and look around the people in the village and the, the environment that you're in right now, how many of them are dying of Ebola right now? Mm -hmm. Zero, none, right? It's like, no, it's not actually real. And then it just went away and it was never real. And it was, so it's like, it was all Ebola-like symptoms, you know, <laughs> and all these type of things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that was an example. I have also always taught and said um, the new paradigm is embodied by individuals and then it grows, therefore, outwardly. It's not something that comes in from outside. It is something that you do yourself and that shifts your entire world and then um, goes forward and kind of infects others because it gives them permission to do it too, right? Um, but... In the past, like, I don't know, maybe month, maybe two months, I have sensed a something beyond. And that's why I was asking you whether you knew what to do or, or had any feelings around that. It, it is almost like part of that embodiment at a singular level involves the joining in intent with others at a at a higher, I don't know, it's not even, I don't like to say either higher self or lower self, or, you know, it's like at a more expanded awareness self. And it's almost like, almost like the, a, a tool I teach, I suppose that might be the solution. I, a tool that I teach is called observation with a capital O, which means you look at something 
and you step away so that there's no judgments, there's no uh, emotional charge, there's no intent of what it should be or what you want to res uh, the result to be. It's just observing it like intensely. It's like you step out of the way and you allow the eyes of the universe to look through you at this particular thing. Yeah. yeah. And it feels that way a little bit. It feels that we have reached a level of awareness singularly that as a collective self, almost like the hundred monkey effect thing, everybody who is stepping into their um, becoming the new paradigm um, or expressing themselves fully as their God or goddess within yeah, yeah. Um, has somehow reached a development stage of being able to do this together. Right. And that's what I was trying to figure out to what together, but I think that that tool, the just observing it, might be it. For that now. is a big tool, and I have that is a big tool. Um, the observer, the observing as source energy itself. Right. You look up to somebody and they're doing something wrong, and you observe it from source energy itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, right. But I, I want to. They stop, they shift, because everyone in, inherently knows what's right and wrong. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say, share with you that I think what you're talking about here, that we're moving into this, this place. I used to say, you have to become the I before you ever become the we. So you have to become the I. Mm -hmm. Recognize that connection, that you are that source energy, and then you can become the we. And I think that's... In a sense, what you're sharing is that transition that's happening. Mm. And I'm going to say that I work with you. I think you work with me. I think we've been working with each other on another level. In a sense, like not, not you know, working, but in this bringing in this same space, the same thing. Um, the other day, Violetta was sharing with me about what it's like to go into the state where she paints and goes into that state. Mm. And then I'm looking at what the state that I go in when I'm working with clients, with people, having them come into that. There is a state that we come into that isn't of this world. Yeah. And I think you do it all the time. I do it. Others do it. And we move in and that's when really source the undivided moves through and speaks and does and thinks, right? Because mm. I don't know about you, but when you go into that state, it's like, well, I know it. when you go into that state, it's like, boom, and it just, the, the, the stuff, it just comes. Yeah. Exactly what to say, what to, you know? Yeah, there's like, it, stay, it goes from, I think the, that false ego part to a knowing. It's almost like, Yes. The base of that energy is truth and knowing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't really quantify or qualify knowing or truth in this paradigm uh, because it's so flexible anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From moment to moment, things shift and move and change. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. When you hear somebody, some you know, you hear people talk, right? You hear people talk about different things, spirituality, whatever, doing this process or something else. You can hear the difference when they're in that state and when they're not, mm -hmm. right? When they're in maybe a nervous state or when they're, in, they're speaking from that space. Yes. In that, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm wondering, Anelia, if, if that's what we're moving into where we're all, it's yeah, really it's one voice. Way. Yeah, it does feel that way. That's exactly described it beautifully. That's that's what I've been sensing. Yeah. Great, isn't it? <laughs> like like you're saying, the 100 monkey effect, the more of us that do that and step into that space and do that, we're changing the more and more few people feel comfortable about doing that. And that's our, that's our God state. That's our mm -hmm. source. That's our original state, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it came from another planet or another dimension or yeah. another 
companies, there's still that, that original core state that we bring with us no matter where we go, no matter where you go, there you are. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fascinating. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, and when I see that, when I see people stepping into the new paradigm, or they, I see them even the perceiving or like the great validation that you have given to me personally, describing exactly what I was seeing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I had a really interesting thing happen today. Um, I'm presently involved in a very, 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 very low frequency, nasty uh, custody case uh, with my little boy. I just came out of the blue, <laughs> right? And then I was looking at why does it keep popping up? And then something else happened. It was totally random. And they're very, very similar. They're, they're accusations of things that are not true and mm -hmm. states that are not real. And the courts take it seriously and they drag me into court and all these things, right? And I was looking at it and thinking, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And I noticed that the first thing the first time it happened it was effective in um taking me off what i was doing so i was writing a book that is really really a lot of fun but also highly informative a novel and i stopped writing my book and then i had to go and deal with courts and lawyers and everything i couldn't write i couldn't do classes i couldn't do conversations i couldn't do any of those things so it became a very effective tool to distract me, right? And to take my focus and attention on what I should be doing or what I enjoy doing into something so low frequency. It's just crazy. Like yeah, insanity, yeah. pure insanity. And, um, and then I was really looking forward to our conversation today, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, so looking forward to it, you know, um, all the things that we're going to talk about, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking, oh, we should talk about this and maybe I should make notes, you know, and all this stuff. I think I'm a little bit of a butterfly, so I didn't do any of those things. <laughs> but, um, and then about five minutes, we were chatting away on, on uh, Facebook and I get an email from my attorney with a letter from his attorney that is really nasty. Like, and it's like, they're demanding, like, medical records and financial records and this records and that record and the other record and it's like total overwhelm you know and I go, oh, whoa and then I remembered wait this is just an attempt to stop me doing something valuable so what are we what am I so what am I about to start we're gonna we're about to start this beautiful conversation that's gonna help thousands if not millions of millions of people out there and this comes in, that's not like coincidental at all, yes. right? <laughs> yeah. Not at all. So I no. sat down, you know, I went into that higher state and kind of understanding and knowing. And it's like breathing into that higher perspective, self energy, and it became nothing. It just dissolved into nothing. And and so it will in 3D as well. Yeah, it's inevitable. And really, yeah. really, folks, you got to pay attention as to what Anilia just did because it's not about the physical as much as it is the higher realms. It's what, where she went into and dissolves it from there. And then what happens is it filters down to 3D. If you start working that way, you're going to clean up. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Yeah. Yes, just yeah. It was it was really good to see to have that experience and that example, um, and the change in um, engagement. I am required to engage at certain levels, and sometimes yeah. I would find myself getting triggered, and I'm like, I don't get triggered for this stuff. So why am I getting triggered? That's really weird. So, and he was like triggered and you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. And I was like, I really don't want to, you have to do this. And it's a trigger was right there. You know, this is past few in the past, it's been going on for six months. Yeah. And so I would 
uh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll write this letter and I'll write it out. And then it was like, the trigger's gone. I was like, that was weird. Okay. And then it was like, that level of engagement was necessary to make something happen in 3D. But it wasn't my, it wasn't like, well, how can yeah. I express it? It was like a tool to get me to yes. create an action, but it wasn't personal. It was just to stimulate me into making the action so that things would become easier that thing you know yeah. so yeah it was, it was really fascinating but today was not, not even that i mean yeah i'm gonna have to have spent several several days working on all these documents i'm looking for um i don't mind because i didn't ever lie about anything so i have all the documents you know exactly exactly but, but at the same time, but, the charge behind it or the, the energy drain from it or the attack and all of that stuff does not exist. And it was something I could just pause, like, I'm not going to deal with that today because I have something wonderful happening in a few minutes. We're going to be talking and chatting and having a wonderful time, you know? Yeah. This, this, this all stems from the feeling the number one phobia that's out there in the world what what will others think of me mm. and that when we come to the other side of that and we don't we don't care in the sense that whatever they think about you they're going to think about you anyway right <laughs> what they think about you is none of your business exactly uh, yeah. This, this, when we come into that space inside and they can no longer scare us with them. The people that know me, know me. The people that don't and are, are wafty, will waft. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a purge when something like that happens, right? Yeah. Through a few of them, right? Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you. Um, as a public person, you probably, I don't know if you experienced it, but I, especially in the first few years, experienced a lot of attacks and um, claims and all sorts of stuff was coming my way. I never, I always refused to respond because it's like, that's none of my business. You know, it's like, and even why would I respond? They already convinced that's the truth. So let them have that truth. I don't care, right? What, exactly. I what, learned that. what hurt me in this particular instance, my own personal case, right? The custody thing was that somebody who was supposed to be my friend and who had been my husband for nearly 10 years would attack me so viciously. You know, it's like that, that was it. I, I think really, I actually don't care what he says. It was just that, that it's action, true. you know? That, that your friend could do this. Yes. Yeah. And I have to share with you, he probably went to a lawyer to find out and got, because that sound, that's a game that they play. To make more money. Oh, right? they do, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. But still, so it was his choice. He could have said no, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. 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 He could have said no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. For others hearing, the more that we can, the more that we can let go of these things that, that, that jumps into our life to try to spook us back into fear responses, do exactly what Anilia is talking about here. Just suspend them. Don't give them any emotion and just let them That's flow. Right. Yeah. That's and the when, key there. Yeah. Don't give them any emotion because emotion feeds reality. That's that's a brick and mortar of creation, so it is. So when we let that float, it's gonna float in your three D too and then float and shift. Mm. Shift what you do want and how you want to or what's going on now. And, and the more you do that, the more you've got dominion over your own reality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've always had that very clear knowing that it is the um, physical emotions, um, well, it's not physical, um, human emotion creates reality. And yeah. that's why the paradigm of enslavement can only be kept through fear because that's a human emotion at a mass yeah. scale. Um, ha 
when did you become aware of that? How did you know or how did you perceive that? What was your experience of it? What, what brought it up for you? Wow. Um, okay, just uh, experiencing probably in my 20s, raising my vibration and then feeling attacked. Mm like the attack happening and a lot what you were talking about, this would come in, that would come in, everything to drag me off. And, and I would get drug off and then I'd be another two years getting back to the state that I was in. You know what I mean? And then something else would come in and drug. And finally, you know, I finally got it that, that if I, I finally got it and also knew at the same time that, that singularity, my singularity as is what is creating reality for me mm-hmm. and that my emotions play that part whatever i whatever i get emotionally involved in uh i'm creating so if i get involved in fear then i started realizing it was part of it was coming for me uh the part that i would join in with it right and so that was probably in my in, in around my 20s i was mm-hmm. listening to some things like uh at the time uh uh, the Tao, listening to uh, the three levels of manifestation, uh, where th- first the thought comes in, and then we entertain it with emotion, which is the second step. And then in that second step, we actually project it out into reality, and it comes back as a, to us as experience. And if we react at that point, then we made it real. We just made thoughts alive are real they've just got birthed into reality so we're still the original creators right so i was listening to these sort of concepts and kind of got it from there that you know my thinking my worrying was creating an emotional state in me which was projecting a reality and then i was reacting to it when it came back to me so by suspending it at this point even though i thought it Then I started stopping it at this point. And then then I started realizing, hey, this is, you know, reality isn't outside of me coming to me. It's actually inside me going out. Uh, then I started playing with, with okay, so then, then what can I do with stop adding emotion to it mm. and get it even further back, right? Yeah. So that was probably the main, main point. But it's been, a, you know, as we all know, I think that it's an ongoing learning process because you can trip into it and start going, and then you stop and you go, okay, this, yeah, you know, this, this come back, right? Yeah. And yeah. suspend this, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to see it. I like the way that, uh, I suppose you could actually stop it in any stage because if you get sucked in, then you can stop the reaction, for example. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like you said, first there was the thought and then the thought created an emotion, the emotion went out and then it got delivered back where you reacted to it and if you react to it, then it becomes solid. I think that's what I understood. What if there isn't a thought, original thought? My experience of life is experience, not thought, you know? So for, say, if I want to manifest something, if I can become interested, that's the other thing. You have to have a level of interest in order, in order to manifest something. Yes, yeah, true. That's true. Um, even even one's own healing. You have to have an interest. Right. It's all manifestation. Yes, right? Yeah. yeah. So if I do develop an interest, I'm learning how to develop an interest in manifesting something for myself. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm working on that part. But then how do you inject the thought part or is that the thought even necessary no not when you're working from emotion because and experience right like like when you're it, this is the random what they used to call the monkey mind where the mind was flipping all over the place and all of those thoughts were being manifested and then reacted to right and mm-hmm. you were making things real but to the level that where you are where you've slowed thinking down and stopped it now that's the prime place to be in for allowing yourself to feel excited about an experience now that's what really manifests because you're here for that okay source wants to know what it is it doesn't have a clue 
we all think that this source is almighty and knows all that, that's that's a, that's a that's a that's a version right <laughs> source wants to express wants to know what it is so when we come into this relationship the original relationship with source energy it is isn't a relationship where you are source and you are experiencing it at the same time okay mm -hmm. it's a duality yeah China. And so you're sitting there in this still mind, right? So you're not, there's an overgrowth in the mind. It's, it's a big overgrowth. And that overgrowth is filled, filled with fear patterns and all kinds of thoughts and things that most of us, if they wanted to run a manifestation, doesn't, we don't need that. Mm. We just need to drop into that place where that part is still, which you're at. Okay. Now all it is is, what do I desire? Like a little girl, five years old, what would I enjoy doing? What, what could I play at, right? Mm -hmm. And so you start thinking about this feeling of this experience, right? And then that experience shows up and you go, ooh, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, feeling. Yeah. Well, that is, is you getting to know who you are. You getting to know, source getting to know what it is it can only know what it is through you and so you call up experiences you go through the experience and send the emotion back to source and source knows what it is so when we get into that balanced relationship with source that's what it is what you're talking about it's about feeling right it's about just feeling excited about your next thing you know like the the, the shack right <laughs> See? And you light up because the shaman that's shack, yeah. Passion. Yeah, that's a passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a great idea. I'm totally going to experiment yeah. with that. That is cool, yeah. And we really manifest from that place that we, we're five years old. We're just a yeah. little girl, a little boy, and we're just like excited about what could we could do. Oh, yeah, what we'll games to play energy. next. <laughs> yeah. And then you get caught, you know. Because it's very socially acceptable when there's a conversation going on or you're with other people, they will say, so what do you think about that? Or, or what are you thinking about? Or, or they, somebody, a friend or whatever says, so what, well, penny for your thoughts, you know? And you go, uh, 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 <laughs> like, does not. does not compute, does not compute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, do I make something up? Uh, okay, I was I supposed to be thinking about what they were talking about? I was just experiencing the conversation. How, you know, there's no thoughts, so what do you do? Um, and then I have to, okay, I'll generate some thoughts about it. And then go. Yeah, okay, you win, I'll generate okay. some thoughts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. so, yeah, that's really cool. So, to manifest, if I do become, like, for example, with the Shaman Shack, and People who don't know, the Shaman Shack is a project that I have. Um, uh, it's more, almost, I couldn't, I don't know what to call it really. It's not really, really a retreat center. It's a, it's a location of meeting with higher self and exploring and it's beautiful anyways. But if I concentrate on that, and you see, even when, I, when I'm like trying to concentrate on that, no thoughts come up, I just, I'm there. I'm in the location. What does, it, what does it feel like to be there? <laughs> yeah, that's what I have power over, right? Yes. Because I've activated, I've, I've, uh, Gaia was very wanting to activate, become fully present in, it's only an acre, I think, to become fully present in the acre. And it's surrounded by woods and beautiful locations. Um, so it's like so beautiful energies like buzzy and alive and just nice yeah, really beautiful and, and you are you going to invite people to come yeah, yeah yeah and what will you do there what would that feel like well you know that's where that's interesting okay. it feels interesting mm -hmm. okay yeah and uh, so you have the roof on now? Yes, we do. <laughs> right. Yeah, it doesn't leak anymore. 
there's no leaks yeah. anywhere. <laughs> but I know that this is your one of your passions is to get your retreat center going, to get this center, this place going. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about passion. It's almost like a chosen experience that is buzzy and giggly and sparkly and um, tickles, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So if you want to, if you want to tickle and buzz Anelia even more. <laughs> that sounds interesting. <laughs> all we need to go do is donate. All oh, right. So yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Totally donate. See, see her lighting up because it's her, it, another word for that is her passion, right? Yeah. It's her, it's the thing that she, one of the many things that she yeah. wants to experience. Yeah, that's really fascinating that what you just did then, because um, one of the things that I find so beautiful is that so many people have supported it already, right? And yeah. it is like the energy of allowance of being loved and supported and cared for and filled with joy from the collective, from ourselves, from humanity, you know? Because people often think about humanity as something external, something that's out there, but they are it, you know? Yes. And that's what we, also, it feels so free and it feels so wonderful to be loved and supported that way. It just feels They cool. vote with every choice yeah. they make. And they vote for things to continue on or they vote for, you know, like we talked about earlier, you can vote for things to, to disappear too, like energies that aren't so uh, productive. We can right. go to yeah. another place and just shift. And now you've literally taken the energy out of that. Or you can energize other things, right? Mm -hmm. that, that are beneficial, that mean something to the world and the planet and to each individual. Yeah. Right? So what do you feel passionate these days about? I, I've had the same passion. Um, my passion is, is that moment that I see people light up and see the, 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 the God within them where they realize I'm totally free. I only convinced myself I was trapped. <laughs> I can create. I mean, that's what I live for is to see that get the God goddess energy come alive in people and they realize they have never been trapped mm -hmm. and it was only just a hypnotic game yes. right yeah that they're the power that's my passion and 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 that passion is in different things like going to the event uh in greece uh putting on the event in greece the workshop or the online events right to, to have that have that spread that consciousness spread that we really do live in a magical reality yeah yeah if we but, just be yeah about your event in greece yes um, so why did you choose greece why did i choose greece why yeah. did we choose? because there was something that happened back in the day there was a there was a there was a greek god named zeus yeah. And he would be funny to put people in hypnosis and split them in two so that they would never reach God consciousness like him because mm -hmm. he was a jealous God. And so we thought, you know, wouldn't it be a good idea to go back to the place and have people come back in and, uh, and heal that split, right? Mm -hmm. And the split is, is what we kind of talked about earlier today. The split is that we have this self that is socially acceptable and very afraid of stepping out of that and pushed away another part of ourselves, which is the God, the goddess within, right? Mm -hmm. which, and if we could heal that split and come back into, which, you know, I see doing, you know, see myself doing and seeing other people doing it and getting excited in the, in the event. So that's why Greece, right? Other things in Greece as well is 
is, you know, it would be nice to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, where, within Greece, how did you choose that particular location? It came. It came. It just popped in. Uh, we were we were looking for, for a place, we were looking for a different hotel, and this one popped in, and we talked to the person, the manager, and the manager just went, boom. She says, I have wanted something like this forever. You know, so oh, nice. she, she's really, really helpful in helping us get the event going there and, and all of that because she wants, she wants it there. She wants to be able to participate in it. Wow, that's pretty yeah, so cool. Came in with this joyful, tickly excitement, right? Right. Yeah. How many people are going to be with you there for the event? We're looking at anywhere up to, you know, probably a hundred people. But uh, you know, at this point, we're still still bringing in, uh, you know, still doing the advertising and bringing in the uh, the people, right? Yeah there yet but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fascinating I was thinking why is he going to Greece you know so I was really um, interested in that the name mm -hmm. uh, is not Greece actually that was put on them mm -hmm. they're not Greece. they're Hellenic and the Hellenic people are the people of the Sun mm -hmm. the people from the Sun and they have a very powerful continence as far as respect for family, uh, spiritual growth, um, uh, freedom. And so a lot's been done to the, to the Hellenic people to shut that free expression down because, you know, just like all the rest of the hypnosis that goes on, you can't have free people running around. Right, yes. So that's another reason I'm going. I know what you're talking about. Certain peoples and certain races um, around the world are have certain frequencies and vibrations which they bring into our human collective that are very, very powerful, very empowering. And those are, the, I, I can see pockets in different locations. And if they become free again, it would seriously affect our world, like no. radically affect our world. Yes. And the Greek people, even now, I can see like a shield around them, around the whole area of that race. Mm -hmm. And and it's almost like if when I'm trying to look at it, it's like this shield and I can't quite see them properly. You know, it's like, it's almost like, it's I the there's a uh, a guarding of the observation, you know, it's like I can't even observe them, so all I can do is observe the shield, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's some other countries that are very, very powerful that way too. Uh Romania is one of them. And there's another one that's right next to or oh, in that uh in that area where all the pyramids are buried under the thing. Bulgaria? Bulgaria, that's right. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it really is fascinating to me. Yeah, I will observe your retreat. Um, okay. Yeah, and um, just observe that location uh, yeah. that you've given. It's really cool. Yeah, thank you so much for this beautiful conversation. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye.